Today's episode of the Punk Rock Horror Podcast is brought to you by Snowed Records. Hey ghouls, gals, creeps, and mutants, Matt here. Real quick before we jump into today's episode, I want to talk to you about our latest sponsor, Snowed Records. Snowed Records is a record company that not only signs some amazing punk rock bands, but also makes some delicious, delicious coffee. Um, with such bands under their name, though, is such as the Queers Independence, Statues on Fire, and even Savage Remains and the Sick Boys, uh, they have been making their name themselves from having so much amazing bands and also, again, having amazing coffee. So what they're doing right now to try and help everyone during the stay-at-home quarantine crisis is giving all of you amazing listeners the chance to go and listen to some amazing albums for free. That is right, for free, that you might not get anywhere else at all. So the way to do this is super simple. You just go over to snubrecords.com, take your mouse, click on fuck COVID-19. That's right. Fuck COVID-19. At the top of the page, pick an album from that drop down menu and you will be able to listen to it in its entirety for free. Also to help anyone out. And this is also why we really, really are happy to partner with them. They are right now having given the opportunity to have anyone reach out to them via email and we'll send you a free bag of coffee that is right all you have to do is send an email to rs at snubbedrecords.com and you will get your own free bag of eight ounce coffee this coffee is their pumpkin roast it is the snubbed records punk in patch that is right punk in patch for totally free they believe that everyone should have access to a cup of coffee and access to great music, and that is why they're doing this right now. And so, all these links will be, be below, but again, if you want to listen to some music right now, go over to snubbedrecords.com, click on Fuck COVID-19 at the top of the page, and start streaming your favorite album right now. And if you want your own coffee, send an email to rs at snubbedrecords.com. We will have those links in the episode notes below. Thank you again, and let's jump into this episode. podcast i'm matt i'm cody and today we're here to remind you that everything is okay and also not okay at the same time and we're also having a weird time adjusting to this so <laughs> we, we we feel what everyone is going through for the most part and also thank you to you all you essential workers regardless of what you do uh you are very valued for continuing to go to work right now and provide a service so thank you so much we appreciate the hell out of you that's right you thank me because <laughs> I'm, I'm an essential, essential. worker because i'm essential <laughs> you're like that should have been directed towards me mostly and then everyone else <laughs> <laughs> no 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 seriously like everyone keeping the backbones out there all the grocery store workers food workers all us essential workers like seriously thank you thank you thank you thank you <laughs> And speaking of things like social distancing, if we sound weird today or there's any weird audio dropouts, yeah. uh, that is because we are recording remotely via Skype. So, Yay. Uh, yeah, that is how we're doing it today. That's how we're keeping with the whole stay inside uh, quarantine rules right now. So, yeah, because uh, I don't think we could tell a police officer on I-25, officer, I have to record my podcast and we person. have to talk about horror movies. In person. <laughs> like, there's people saving lives right here, and here's us right above them. <laughs> if anything, you should be escorting me. <laughs> so I could get there faster. Shame on you. Nice to know that my tax dollars go to you, helping you sit on your fucking hat, and then we're in jail. Yeah, that's how we go to jail. <laughs> and get fined $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Right. I just called him lazy. You said you were <laughs> fucking fat and lazy. And I'm like, I still said lazy. <laughs> so I'm still telling the truth. <laughs> like, you said it through being tased. <laughs> like, uh, if anything, that should come at more as a shock to them that I was still responding to the pain. That is police <laughs> brutality against a minority. Again. God. <laughs> <laughs> It's no, just... but for real, <laughs> we appreciate all the officers out there. <laughs> or do we? I don't know. I have it out for you in my head that never happened because it's a situation that I made up. I've got insane. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like and quarantine. <laughs> it's, it, it's but no, like for real, it is so fucking weird. Like how everything is right now. Like I but, know. Like it's just it's like still the toilet paper shortage is nuts. I I I for the hell of it, I tried to see what we could get. Like if we ordered it, I wanted to see like how soon we could actually get it from Amazon. I'm like. Like, maybe I'm willing to pay, like, 10 bucks for it. I don't know. It depends the delivery day, you know? Yeah. And I looked, and it's just, like, the... It was, like, I think, like, between May... F- it was, like, May 8th and June 15th. Holy shit. Just in time for my birthday. <laughs> it was, like, I got you this toilet paper, buddy. <laughs> shush, 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 Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> it was supposed to come like a few months ago. Clouds. <laughs> because that's what I got. I figured, you know, what is God's creator's creation? Clouds in our bums. So there you <laughs> go. You're welcome. <laughs> Ta-da! Uh, <laughs> oh my God! I hope but, uh, I hope we're like we're okay by June, man. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to uh to a friend, my friend Cat, and I was talking to her a little bit about it. And she was uh she recently just had her last day at work before they, you know. Uh, kind of like, well, I don't, I'm not going to say laid off because I, I didn't really ask for specifics, but either way, I was just talking to her because like the panic was setting in. And so, we're, you know, I was just trying to be a friend, be there for her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, it's just like really kind of scary. Like, I know like people blow it out of proportion. Like, I know people say that we're blowing it out of proportion or try to joke through it, but really I'm, I'm kind of scared. And I'm like, you know, I, I think joking about it is a good way to try to handle it, you yeah. know, like with, with like in reason, I'm sure like it is. But yeah. like I, I I also think we're past the like if if people are still saying like oh we're blowing this out of proportion I'm just like like my response to that is mostly like they're not taking in the fact of everyone else that they come in contact with yeah or people that they come in contact with and who they will come in contact with like it's it's a very kind of selfish and self centered mentality to have that. Yeah. For that reason, and that's why I get really kind of annoyed with it, because like, yeah, like I'm totally for not adding to the hysteria and staying calm. I'm with that, but yeah. I'm also like, some people like I'm are legitimately gonna... concerned about it, and they have every right to be. Yeah, and it's like I'm not going to shit all over someone's parade that's like scared about it, because yeah, like you said, they have every right to be. Like, I'm scared because like this could cost me my second job and a ch- like potentially right. because like they're old people (laughs) so like and it's like that's exactly what i mean man like it's not even like even if it's not on a uh, health level like if it's not affecting you in a health way it's probably affecting you in an economic way like our friend jeff right now which actually i was going to throw a shout out um here too soon jeff over at gorkhounds right now he's struggling with gorkhounds playground which um by the way he actually so because uh it's another business it's another locally owned Denver, Colorado business that's getting kind of hit hard right now yeah. due to the stay at home order. Um, Jeff actually released a GoFundMe to kind of to help open keep open the doors for go- Gorehounds during this time. Um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna put the link to that in the episode notes below. But even if you don't live in Colorado, you've heard us talk about Gorehounds a few times here. We talked about them a lot. They're really good friends with us. Jeff is a really great friend. And uh, it's a GoFund. It's like that. It's just what I said. It's a GoFundMe to help keep the doors open and help them out. So I'm going to put that link below. Please, whatever you're Whatever you can donate, if you're willing to donate it, please go ahead and do so below. If not, just share it with your friends. Share it with yeah. your other horror friends. Um, there's very few hidden gems in the world, like a horror video rental store. I'm not saying Colorado isn't the only state that has it, but we do need to no. kind of... I, I do feel like um, it's good it, for us to try and help as much as possible. Oh, yeah. Not just like a video rental store. Like, you can rent it out and, like, watch movies there and host parties there and stuff. It's a fun little place. So, like, oh, those yeah, are the businesses yeah. that we like to like to see. You know, they're fun places for us to escape to. So, well, and just, it's just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, man. I was saying, and, and again, we're just saying, if you can, like, definitely don't, like... If it's your last dollar and everything, like we're just, it's a trying time. It's just, we're just trying to help out a friend, just like friends have helped. We're trying to help out each other in all, all this community. Exactly. Um, and also, I'm going to throw another shout out because we had an effort, because uh, we had a plug before this uh, for snubbedrecords.com. Snubbedrecords.com is right now uh, helping out the whole entire community with not only giving you access to streaming albums uh, that are under their record label, such as with such names as like the Queers under their name, 
Um, and you're let, they're letting anyone listen to their music for free, but they're also sending out free bags of coffee to anyone uh, who, uh, who is eligible for it. So go check out snubbedrecords.com. Awesome. We got that link in the episode notes below as well. Uh, I'm sure you heard the advertisement beforehand, but uh, we really like what they're doing. And because it's trying times, we want to we wanna try and help spread this word and help spread the word of anybody trying to help out especially as much as possible um with that being said man i mean i think we've talked enough about the whole keystone virus yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm still not i i know i figured out why uh youtube is actually banning it I, it makes more sense now yeah i was um, i know there was a legit reason i just so, i couldn't word yes. it so the reason is because there's some very racial and xenophobic people right now uh just yeah. like very very uh again uh, segre- uh discriminatory towards anybody who looks chinese or asian in general um assuming they are chinese and so yeah. they're uh you know some are taken to the extremes of just like beating you know adults and children up that look like they're chinese and eat, oh like God. yeah it, i'll talk more about it friday because it's definitely so, something that i hate yeah. Um, but like i don't want to start off too heavy i feel like we talked about enough heavy yeah. stuff but I'm this is gonna just, be a heavy episode <laughs> yeah more so just saying this uh is for uh for everybody wondering why we can't really say it on yeah. youtube also last thing to talk about i'm really sorry we really got to jump into this just really last thing so right now there's going to be kind of a hinge on videos of us recording like our main episodes live on youtube yeah. so i'm still going to come up we're still going to i'm still going to be putting things on there um we're actually just recently released our latest segment shr which is the short horror review so since now everything's going through a streaming service we're going to try to be on top or at least I'm going to try and be on top of watching all these movies that are coming out. Next one on my list is the hunt. And if you haven't, if you haven't checked out that SHR episode yet, um, all we're doing is just, we're going to go see these new movies that are coming out. And if you're hesitant on whether you should watch them or not, we're going to review them how we normally review our other movies that we recommend to you. Only difference is that'll be a little more spoiler heavy, but we'll try to keep that, um, at, you know, to a minimum and not really talk about it unless it's absolutely needed, but you're going to learn what the pros and cons for it, what you're expecting and what you shouldn't really take to heart from critics who are harshly against it. And so that's really what we're doing for that. So um, mm-hmm. with that being said, we got some things to talk about in horror today. So I'm sorry. I, that was like a whole thing. I know we, we had a lot. <laughs> I had like a that we had to get off of just like even with still being like in a stay at home order, like just shit just like piled up in my head. And I'm just like, oh, my God yeah how am i how's there just so many things just piling on top at once i'm supposed to be staying at home this is so weird <laughs> the work never escapes me <laughs> no so but that's okay i well, honestly patreon.com <laughs> slash punk car horror podcast and if you want to keep up with what we're doing you can follow us on facebook search up punk car podcast <laughs> no really i should be more th- i'm really thankful for the work because it's helped me keep my uh my sanity for having to be inside for so long yeah so yeah I, I'm, I'm really helpful for it so um yeah so first thing we're gonna kind of so i don't want to end on another bummer thing before uh you know we get to a very very mm-hmm. bummer type of subject well i mean okay it's a bummer subject but holy shit this is a crazy episode i think you guys are gonna fucking love it it's a it's a fucking hollywood movie and i'm surprised <laughs> it's a hollywood movie that hasn't been made yet so like, okay. straight up m- Martin Scorsese, I feel like shit would be great. <laughs> it's like, like it's like right there. He needs oh, to no, just put his name on it. No, this is this is a hundred percent, hundred percent Quentin Tarantino movie. Sorry, I was thinking <laughs> they kind of both came out with like really great movies around the same time recently, and I got it mixed up because like I'm all scatterbrained because of like just the research and the craziness of this guy. I, I guess they're both also. I guess to be fair, both their movies are kind of in that same intense raw type of writing and action yeah. style. I would but say the only the... difference is that I feel like Martin Scorsese is oddly more proper than Quentin Tarantino is. Yeah, like, and it. that's why I was like, no, no, you take the pro- the properness out of this. The, the the insanity is like straight up like something I would see Quentin Tarantino direct a movie of. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just just wait. <laughs> let's get let's get through some articles. 
Right on. Okay, so to get out of the way, I uh, want to give a rest in peace to the exorcist and the shining composer Christoph uh, Penderecki. He yeah. passed away at the age of 86. Um, he has earned three Grammys over his career. Uh, most recently in 27, he was also nominated for two primetime Emmys in the 1990s. On the horror front, several of Penderecki's most eerie haunting compositions were famously used in William Frederick's The Exorcist and uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Pandarecki's work work also was also featured in David Lynch's Wild at Heart, Inland Empire, and of course the number one and only Twin Peaks, mm-hmm. um, as well as Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs and various other projects, including Twister, Children of Men, Shutter Island, Black Mirror, and even Ready Player One. Um, he is survived by his wife uh, Elizabeth, daughters Bieta and Dominica, and son Lucas. So that's very sad. You know, he's definitely, definitely probably one of the more hidden, you know, icons in the whole horror community. Just what he did for the Exorcist and the Shining. I mean, uh, the, the soundtrack alone sells uh, half of the feeling of that move, those movies. So, um, oh, yeah. But uh, it, his legacy lives on forever, terrifying us and the generation below us. So that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no joke. Yeah, Erin's uh, not at that age yet where she can watch The Exorcist, but when she is, like, uh, I'm, I'll let you know if she's terrified. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna, she might poop her pants. She might poop her pants. Um, so on the whole indie horror game scene, uh, Pumpkin Jack a demo is now available on Steam for all you Steam heads. I know that's not a thing, but can you tell I'd never play on Steam? That's for sure. <laughs> Um, it's just PC Master Race. It's a PC Master Race. It's not Steam Heads. It's PC Master Race. That's how. That's how you know who the posers are when they say <laughs> steamer. When they say shit like steamers, steamer and steam heads. How's it going, fellow kids? <laughs> fellow <What's> teenagers. <laughs> Pull up a chair, fling it around, sit on the opposite side, and be like, "Let's rap about it." <laughs> yeah. So last month, publisher Head Up Games and developer Nicholas uh, Maisonier <laughs> announced that 3D action platform Pumpkin Jack. Um, there was also mention of a demo, which today has officially been released on Steam. Fans of games like Medieval and Jack and Daxter will enjoy engaging in an epic battle of evil against good as you jump, dodge, and carve your way through challenging enemies and daunting puzzles. Said Head Up Games and press release, the use of Unreal Engine grants for gor- gorgeously rendered and gruesomely colorful landscapes. Games. The game is slated for a Q4 2020 release on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Uh, by this way, I got this article from Blade Disgusting, done by Mike Wilson. Shout out to him, very well written. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just kind of like uh, to it, it really is like the cross between medieval and Jack and Daxter. I mean, the character himself has has that skeleton build of med and evil, mid and of medieval. Excuse me, mm-hmm. uh, but he had like. His, his head is just a flaming pumpkin. Like it's really dope looking, and like I, I I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes open. I guarantee I'm probably gonna pick it up on the Switch once it yeah. comes. Out. Yeah, I it don't... definitely sounds more like a Switch game to me. Yeah, I'm not a steamer, so I can't really play the demo. <laughs> Wicked poser, noob. <laughs> <laughs> steamer. Now, uh, now it's coming to the point where like, you know why people hate it is because I'm basically just calling them poop, like hot, <laughs> wet. Because that's what a steam who on you know, the chest, you know, yeah, like <laughs> fucking we know, you know, we're we're kids, we can't describe that. Come on, man, we're still cool. <laughs> we're not kids podcast. You should know better now to not play us around your kids at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're under eighteen, shame on you. Shame, shame. On you. shame. And they're like, ah, oh, fucking whatever, you you fucking old fogies. Old fogies. <laughs> the fuck is Jack and Dax? That shit doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, sp- what is Spyro? <laughs> Sounds like something fucking Sips would play. <laughs> yeah, no, where's my Mountain Dew? Let's cut it up. Just like fucking inject it into their arm. Just. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if anyone starts ejecting Mountain Dew into their arms via syringe, we are not liable for that idea or any injuries that you have pertain afterwards. I just feel <laughs> like we have to say it. I know. Don't. Just don't. 
I don't know. I, I guess I should have more faith. Um, so 90, <laughs> 1980s arcade game Dragon's Lair is getting a live action film from Netflix. So uh, the wiki about it explains the plot protagonist Dirk the Daring is a knight attempting to rescue Princess Daphne from the evil dragon Singe who has locked the princess in the foul wizard Mordark's castle. Uh, fans of the series will remember that Dragon's Lair was the turn based type of cinematic adventure that came out in the 80s where you would be pleasantly you know, pleased to some very well animated cinematic sequences and then have to make choices within the game that was the gameplay is a fantastic game too um featured in the second season of stranger things the 1983 arcade game dragon's lair is now getting that live action film thr reports that ryan reynolds is in talks to star in the nexus film which is being pinned by dane dan and kevin hageman the lego movie and scary story of scary stories to tell in the dark as well so um yeah, uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a short lived animated series. I don't know if it's really it does. It seems like it's just gonna be a limited one. It's they're, they're just gonna do the whole plot of the game and just make it a whole movie. I know a lot of fans of this game too were really wanting like a full animated movie within itself, um, just because of how well it's drawn. Because yeah. it, it's it's just a very colorful uh, animation. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, and also there's no set release date at all. I mean. This is only in the planning stages. So, uh, but with that as well, more Castlevania news for Netflix is that Castlevania is getting its season four. Nice. So uh, the official camp for the series tease Twitter, you didn't think would leave all the blood business unfinished, did you? With that little tease, it was confirmed that Castlevania will be getting its fourth season on Netflix. And kind of, I'm re- you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was definitely one of the people really skeptical when I heard for when I first heard this was coming out and like on Netflix and it barely had any content. I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be something that's overlooked. I, I'm kind of glad that it's it's actually taken on a life and it's grown a fandom behind it. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. Same here. Like, it's especially like. I don't know, especially because, like, it's surprising to me, mostly because, like, the Castlevania games, like, as much as I love them, and I know a lot of people love them, like, it's one definitely has become one of those games where they just stopped making them, and I know there's probably, like, some legal issues or whatever, but, like, when they just stopped making them, and the fact that they're still that this popular, like, it's it's cool, because it's a horror-based game that's still this popular. That's not oh, Resident heard. Evil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Totally agree. And you know, man, I, I I just I just, you know, really hope that it brings a much want for good, you know, well told vampire stories again. Mm-hmm. And we want that and and I hope that it somehow brings a spiritual successor to the Blood Omen series. I'm never gonna get up on that no matter no matter how unlikely it is. <laughs> Blood Omen and also Legacy like, of Cain. I mean I Well that it, Legacy of Cain came from Blood Omen. <laughs> Yeah. It's really confusing. There's there's like oh there's there's so many. I can kind of <laughs> see why they don't want to do it cuz there's a lot of, br- of branching storylines. Like Raziel gets two fucking games and like Kane gets two fucking games and then they get a game together. Like, I can kind of see where it gets a little uh a little daunting. Yeah. But still, I'm not giving up hope. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, with that last thing to just talk about, so, uh, maybe, I I don't get, I, I, I mean, they abandoned the whole Dino Crisis of property actually becoming a game. Um, I did, that happened a little bit ago. I never wanted to report on it just because it broke my heart so much. Yeah. Yeah, now I get you. (laughs) <laughs> so um but one thing to kind of end on so uh for for fans of the strangers or the strangers pray at night um director and star are taking part in a free the strangers pray at night online watch party march 31st so uh, the day so it so if you're listening to the, if you're not on our patreon it's today that it's going to be happening uh so to tell you the exact time though and all the details fans of the strangers pray at night will want to navigate over to the facebook page women in horror this coming tuesday night march 31st as the page will be streaming the 2018 slasher sequel beginning at 8 p.m eastern standard time as part of the free event the film will be shown its entire entirely directly on to facebook and two very special guests will be chatting along director johans Robert, roberts of 47 meters down and star damien maffe of haunt will be hanging out 
in the chat for the duration of the film, chatting with fans and answering questions. So really, really cool that they're doing this for everybody who's kind of stuck at home right now. And if you're a fan of horror, um, it is going to be Tuesday. So again, it's tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending where you are uh, here on Mountain Standard. It's probably going to be an hour before or hour after. So just time that up with uh, your your time appropriately. Um, so yeah, uh, check it out. We'll... Uh, it, I'll try to include this link below if I remember to actually do it in the episode notes, but go check out Women in Horror. That's where it's going to be. You just got to search up Women in Horror on Facebook, and you will be there. Um, yeah, I mean, really cool stuff across the board for horror, uh, things mm -hmm. that are happening, and I thought that'd be really cool to include that little tidbit of uh, that they're doing that. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So with that being said, uh, you know, if you like what we're doing or if you haven't worked, or you have any, you know, your own gripes about our what we're doing or no gripes at all i mean maybe you want to reach out to us and say hi please feel free to do so over our email podcast at gmail.com or even give us a shout out on our twitter but can you get over to cody now what, what are we talking about today cody what are we treating to everyone who is at a stay-at-home or essential worker today oh boy so uh so as matt knows i told uh, originally we were going to do a different guy but then i told him like no no, I found this guy, and I want to do this one. And then I told him that I wasn't even going to tell him. So this is all going to be new. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I know nothing of what's happening. No. So tonight I decided we are going to talk about Johann Jack Unterberger, the poet of death. I actually never heard of this one. Really? No. Ooh, so you're in it for a treat. So this guy, holy shit. This right. guy became so notorious. He went to jail, got released, or for a life sentence, got released because he became so notorious. He became so famous for his poetry and his autobiography that he got a cult following that he got released after a minimum of 15 years and then went on to an entire crazy crime spree afterwards. And there's so much to this story. All right. So I feel like that that is a pretty much meditated choice. <laughs> <I'm> a, <laughs> what's the first thing when I get out of prison? Go on a murder. You know what? I feel like that is where the stigma comes from. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so was like when I read the story, I was like, Austria. Come on. So he's Come the most, on. yeah, he is the most notorious serial killer of Austria. So starting from the beginning. Johann was born on August 16th, 1951. His father was an American soldier that was stationed in Italy during World War II. And his mother, uh, Teresa Unterberger, was a Venice, uh, Viennese barmaid, waitress, and a lady of the night. So, um, Johann never met his father because his father was just an American soldier who just wanted a prostitute for the night. Knocked her up and then, you know... Got shipped out. So <laughs> as he one never would. Met, yeah, as as a soldier who did back then. He was like, all right, well, back to America. Peace out. <laughs> Peace out, homies. And so Jack never met his father, and his mother continued to work the night. And she obviously couldn't work the night with a baby. So when, uh, when Jack was around, like, they never said exactly what age. He never said exactly what age. He just like, kind of said an early one. So I would say when he was like between three and four is when his mom decided to just dump him off on his grandfather. And his grand, uh, his grandpa lived in a small one room cabin in the outskirts of, uh, in the forests of Austria. And his grandfather was abusive mentally. He was an alcoholic. He beat him. And, Johan had some claims that when he was a kid, his grandfather would also bring his girlfriends and prostitutes, and he would sleep with them in the same bed that they shared while Johan was still in it. What the shit? Yeah, so that's what he grew up with. So it's like it's kind of understandable that he's he's gonna lead a life of crime. Like this, there's no hope for this kid. <laughs> like, wow, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, like, I don't know, like, I don't even, I can't even imagine how to, like, rationalize being in that type of situation, like, I yeah. can't even say, like, look at, like, the silver linings part. No, there, like, there isn't, there like, isn't one. Oh, that's just so brutal, just, like. It's super, like, it's, yeah, and so. Like, going to school the next day, being tired, and, like, 
Like, why oh. are you so tired? <laughs> My grandfather is fucking this girl in the ass in the bed. I just can't. I can't sleep. I'm so tired. Uh, no, I mean, like, he didn't go to school. Come on, he did not go to school. Well, did he or did he not go to school? Now, I, he now did. I don't know. He didn't go to school. Instead, instead of going to school, he decided to lead a small life of crime, of petty crimes, until he, you know, hit puberty. And so then he started pimping and sexually assaulting girls. And he was in and out of prison basically his entire youth. And then in 1974, Johann murdered 18-year-old German citizen Margaret Schaefer by strangling her with her own bra. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison with the, poss- with the, with, with the possibility of parole in 1976. It was because he claimed he went insane and saw her as his mother and nothing, no one else until she was dead. And so, wow. yeah. And so when, while in prison, here's where the craziness starts. While in prison, Johan taught himself how to read and write. And he became, started publishing poems, short stories, plays, and ended up writing an autobiography called The Purgatory or The Trip to Prison, Report of a Guilty Man, which later served as the basis for a documentary about himself. <laughs> like, he got a documentary about him, about all of his life until he went to prison. And it was a, it was a short black and white documentary written about him. And wow. so that garnered him a following like everyone was like he's so he's written all these like great poems and he wrote this amazing autobiography he's a changed man he taught himself how to read and write and he's so beautiful like that's what these people were thinking and so in 1985 a campaign to pardon and release Unterberger from prison began Austrian president Rudolf uh, Rudolf Kirschlager refused the petition when presented to him, citing the court-mandated minimum fi- minimum of 15 years in prison. So I like this guy. He's like, no, he brutally murdered a woman, strangled her to death with her own bra. I am not releasing him unless he at least serves 15 years. But then, and so writers, artists, and journalists, and politicians agitated for a pardon, including the author and 2004 Nobel Peace Prize winner, Elfried Yelink and Gunther Gross, Peter Humer, and the editor of magazine Manu Kripe, Adolf, uh, Alfred Kohlerstein. I promise this is like going to be the end of all these German names soon. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> and only I promise there's only going to be like three that I'll have to say throughout the rest of the story. But anyways, they all just kept saying, release him, release him. And then he's just, just had all these fans saying, release him, release him. And so Untuberger, on a life sentence, was released on May 23rd, 1990, for after serving only 15 years, his minimum. And so upon his release, his autobiography was taught in schools and his stories for children were performed on the radio. Uteberger himself hosted television programs which discussed criminal rehabilitation. He also worked as a reporter for the public broadcaster ORF, where he reported on stories concerning the very murders he will later be found guilty for. Huh. Yeah. Very active. Yeah, and during this time, he also used his fame to get ride-alongs with police officers and learn the routines of the prostitutes of the night in Austria because in Austria, prostitution isn't illegal. So they had routines and stuff. And then he would, and yeah, and that's, and he would also learn how the police would investigate disappearance of prostitution, prostitutes and stuff. Oh my God, that's so like, weary. Because he became such a renowned crime author also that people would like they would go to him for for advice. People would call him on advice for disappearances and police officers would want to work closely with this guy the entire time. So let's go. I feel weird about being into murder mysteries. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's just oh, this story's gonna make you feel dirty. So 
Let's jump into the crimes, shall we? I think I might become a brownie by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I just need hugs and sunshines. So. <laughs> so, jumping to the crimes. On September 15th, 1990, some passersby walking along the river, uh, Vatava River, the Vatava River in Czechoslovakia near Prague came across the grisly sight of the body of a young woman, Blanka Bokova. She's very, very important. Blanka Bokova was the very first victim of Jack Unterberger. She was left in in a degrading state, lying on her back, nude with a... Sorry, this is very, very, very graphic. I'm going to take a second. So, quick warning, trigger warning for anyone that we're about to get into. This is going to be very, very graphic for some heavy content. Yes, sorry. (laughs) Some graphic content and some, some very... Yeah. So, we are warning you now. Okay. Uh, she was laying on her back, nude, with a pair of gray stockings knotted around her neck. Her legs were open, and she had been covered with leaves. She, there was also uh, traces of uh, evidence showing that she was violently sexually assaulted with a tree branch. Um. Um, several weeks later, uh, Brunhild Masser, a well-known prostitute from Graz, was reported missing. As Austria had a very had very few problems with prostitutes, the authorities became concerned. As I said earlier, um, two months later, in early okay, prostitution isn't legal. It's just it, it's not looked down upon in Austria. Sorry, I don't want to say it's legal. I have to retract that from earlier. I wasn't sure. I could, I didn't look that part up. But anyways, two months later, in early December, another <laughs> prostitute. Heidi Mary uh, Hammerer also went missing. On New Year's Eve, almost a month after her disappearance, her body was found by hikers in a wood outside of the town. Also laying on her back, covered with dead leaves and bramble, also re- uh, strangled to death with her pantyhose or a brassiere. Um, they were all... Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Hammerer... Um, although not naked, her legs were bare and a missing piece of material from her slip was found in her mouth. Uh, the slip is a part of a pounty house. Hammer, like Blanca Bakova, had been strangled with a pair of tights and also displayed bruises and the ligament mark on her wrist suggesting that she had been tied up. Several red fibers on her clothing did not match anything she was wearing, appeared to be possible evidence left by the killer. Um, a few days later, the body of missing prostitute Masser was discovered. Her badly decomposed body was also found in a quiet wood, in, quiet woods in uh, Bregangs. Again, there was no no signs of robbery, and her manner of death matched the previous two murders. The Austrian federal police investigating the case found it difficult to unearth details and about the prostitute's clients. There had been no witnesses to the murders, and the police found themselves without any leads to go on. At this particular stage, the Austrian police were unaware of Blanca Bakova's murder in Prague, though, and they did not know that they were dealing with the serial killer. The view of this, though, would soon begin to change when another prostitute, Elfriede Schrempf, disappeared from Graz on March 7, 1991. Schrempf's parents contacted the police to notify them that a man had called the family home several times and taunted them about their daughter's occupation. What concerned them and the police was the fact that the girl's telephone number was unlisted and suggested that the person who may be responsible for her disappearance made the calls. And on October, on October 5th, 1991, Shemp's body was found like the others in a woodland area just outside Graz. Her remains were skeletal, and again, her uh, she was covered in leaves. The police, if they hadn't realized then that they were in the midst of a serial killer, soon did when four more prostitutes vanished in this time. Jesus. Sylvia, yeah, Sylvia Zagler, uh, Sabine Moizzi, Regina Prem, and Karen Urolo, uh, Urglu, oh my god, Urglu, had all vanished within a month time. God. You're doing good, oh, buddy. the names. You're doing good. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. Um, the bodies of Moizzi and Urglu were found in May 1991. Both died by asphyxiation by one of their undergarments. The finding of these bodies led breakthrough led to a breakthrough when retired 70-year-old investigator August <laughs> Schenner came forward recalling that these deaths were similar to the murder of Margaret Schaefer by Jack Unterberger. Damn. Oh, Geiger is going... Uh, so, 
Shanner said that, which helps out the greatest man of this entire investigation. Holy shit, this dude is a good detective. And if, and if back then, if someone got murdered in Austria, I'd want this man on the case because he knows his shit. This um, is our man. Mm-hmm, this is our man. Dr. Ernst Geiger, a detective, a detective on the Austrian Federal Police Force, had never been convinced of Unterberger's act as a reformed man. He never believed it when Unterberger came out. I was like, I'm good now. <laughs> like, you know, with a name like Geiger, I can really like imagine it being like the like written detective on like that can figure out anything. You know, like know. any like the show that would focus on a detective who just like has a quirk or just knows. Like he just knows. He always like knows. The, he's like the house of detective work. Yeah, he's like, get me Geiger. <laughs> like he's got he's got his ways. I don't approve of him, but damn, does he get results? Damn. I want Geiger now. Get his ass <laughs> in my office. We need you now more than ever, Geiger. <laughs> you have to. I never trusted that man, Unterberger. So, here's a crazy thing about the Reformed Act that Unterberger, like, was portraying. When he was released, like, they questioned him about, like, the, the murder from his past. And he was like, that's behind me now. All I can do is move forward. Because their bodies are in the ground. Jesus Christ. Like, come on. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? And the craziest thing about, like, Unterberger, this guy... So he wasn't just on Aust- Austrian talk shows and stuff. This guy came to L.A. And he went while in L.A., like he was on talk shows. He was working. He worked closely with the L.A.P.D. Wow. <laughs> on the on cases who on cases that happened in L.A. because so. Geiger was never convinced of Unterberger's Reformed Act. He put a discreet surveillance on him. So when Unterberger was invited to Los Angeles to write articles, it wasn't just Geiger who noticed that the latest murder suddenly stopped. All the police started noticing, and he realized that he would have to look seriously into Unterberger's movements and, and either eliminate or... Wait, movements and either eliminate or arrest... Oh, yeah, just, like, get him. So, it, but he you know, had, man. but it was just a question of getting the right evidence. Like, so he had to find the right evidence to get Unterberger because he, he has all the paper trails. So they started following and piecing together a paper trail of Jack's movements, which led to them having Jack in all the places and all the times of all the murders that he did in in um, Austria, in Italy, and as we're about to find out, also in L.A. <laughs> Because, um, so after, so while Jack was in LA, he returned, he like, he had no idea all this was happening in Austria, that Geiger was building this case, was figuring out all this stuff that was re- like researching it. Cause Jack has been on, in LA working with the LAPD on, uh, he would tell them that he is a famous author. He would tell them who he was and he would be like, yeah, so I'm writing, uh, crime novels and I'm writing on how to help protect prostitutes and how their cases are going and how they are caught and how can we like help prostitutes like prostitutes feel safe that's what this yeah, guy yeah. fucking did Damn, <laughs> and yeah. he would go on like ride alongs with the LAPD and figure it out how, that you know the difference between America and Austria is that America does not give a shit about prostitutes you know so yeah, he was yeah. just learning, like, they would just be like, yeah, you know, we just, like, come check on them, whatever, and stuff like that. And then he'd be like, oh, cool. I know mm-hmm. what I'm so, doing tonight. <laughs> like, it was insane. So Jack returned to Austria. When he finally returned to Austria after his little stint in L.A., he realized that he was a wanted man. And so he started calling news shows and radio shows, proclaiming his innocence and calling the police like pieces of shits for not even being able to catch the real killer. He was like, if you have all this evidence, why haven't you caught him yet? Because you're just full of shit. You're just trying to pin this all on me, you sons of bitches. Like, this dude had an ego. Like, he wow. thought he was untouchable. 
So, like, this dude is, like, the European Ted Bundy. Yeah, yeah, basically. He's just like, you can't touch me. I fucking work with the police. I write crime novels. Why would I do this? Like, that was his, like, argument was, why would I do that? I'm trying to help prevent this. So, Geiger, our knight in shining armor, wanted to make sure he had as much circumstantial evidence as possible. So he got he got a lot from prostitutes that that uh, some that survived uh, Unterberger and some that saw him with like the victims and from bar uh, bars where that he would pick them up because Jack had an Emma like his the ones he would murder are prostitutes and girls that can't that party girls because you know his mom was a prostitute and she and his grandpa was a drunk and they both partied all the time so that's where he would always channel his aggression towards. Um, and so they got all of that, but Geiger really, really wanted some more evidence. He really wants to put this guy away. He doesn't want a sh- just he doesn't want a hair of cir- uh, non circumstantial evidence to get him released or anything. And speaking of a hair, he was able to perform forensic tests on the BMW that Jack bought when he was first released, and they found a hair. They he had to go through some serious finding to get this BMW. And he only got the back seat, and he found a hair that belonged to Blanca Bakova, the very first victim from Prague, on the back seat. (laughs) He found it years later after Jack already sold it. He managed to still find that hair. And that was the damning evidence that he needed. So they got a search warrant for Jack's apartment in Vienna and found a picture of him with LAPD officers so Geiger then called the LAPD to see if there were any prostitute murders with the same M.O. And so in L.A., they found several. They found a bunch of them with the same M.O. as when Jack was in town assisting the LAPD for the murders. So they probably have some egg on their face. But they were only able to really get them for two of those murders in L.A. So here's another crazy thing. During this entire time, during all these murders... During this entire time that Jack is in on air and on television, on the news, writing these books, all these sightings, these plays, he has a girlfriend this entire time named Bianca Mrak. And she actually came out and did interviews, and she's on this really, really good documentary that I watched about this. It's called The Jack Untuver. Uh, it's on YouTube. Um, Jack Untuverger Serial Killer Documentary. And there's another one that ID did on him and she was in it and she talked about how he was. So he like was super manipulative and controlling and abusive. Basically everything uh, the girl from the invisible man went through, you know, she talked about he could, she couldn't pee unless he told her she couldn't eat unless he told her she wasn't allowed to go out unless he told her that's what this girl went through. And she was, but at the time she claimed she was happy with them. Until, like, all this came out, and then she was like, oh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that, that's kind of bad. Yep. And so she ended up unwittingly actually lead to his arrest. So after they flew to Austria and dealt with all of that shit, and him, like, going, I'm innocent, and all that stuff, like, mocking the police, this motherfucker somehow gets the balls to illegally fly and sneak back into the U.S. He could have went to jail for that alone. But the U.S. Marshals waited because her mother decided to wire them money. So they had to go to a Western Union office in South Beach, California, and the U.S. Marshals were out there waiting for them. And so when they left the office, Jack noticed the Marshals and started bolting. (laughs) He ran through like it was sad. He goes through a restaurant and gets caught in their cargo bay. And they're like, motherfucker, you are arrested and you're going to be tried for murders in Austria. This guy started crying. He just broke down from several like several witnesses saying he just started crying his eyes out. God, how fucking pathetic. Yep. So there's a uh, there's some small legal battles over this guy. Uh, the U.S. wants to try him, and Austria wants to try him. And of course, the U.S. is like, "You fucking let him out!" God, dude, like, come on, you know, like, okay, not to make light of something, not to make too light of a heavy situation, but just like that fucking like 
image alone just like sounds like something that would come out of like a fuck like a fucking like Will Ferrell movie, like <laughs> or someone who does like like someone who would decide to like really make a movie about like a murderer, but just yeah. like make it a satire of like fucking murdering. Like I can see Will Ferrell fucking doing it and being the goddamn murderer, get fucking running through the goddamn kitchen, probably taking off his shirt at some point, and just like yeah. throwing something all over, like throwing some like sauce all over his body, and be like. <laughs> I don't want to be murdered. No, I didn't do it. I can't go to jail. I'm an author. I'm an author. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? Like, like, can you imagine, like, everyone at work that day? Like, (laughs) fucking party story of the year. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) I I don't know, man. It's L.A. They were probably also thinking, like, fucking another Wednesday. Like, like, it's more probably like, like, you know, this happens a lot more than you think, but we've never had someone to this level of like insane <laughs> run through our kitchen. Like, we actually have procedures for when this happens. Like, you can kind of see why everybody in a choreograph stood to the side at the same time. Like, we just we're aware. Like, this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not we're we're used to this stuff. Like we we always get the day off every time it happens, so like it's really nice. I mean, you know, in some ways, I mean, it's not nice that they're murderers because that's crazy, but mm. it's nice we get the day off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they made, the the manager walked in and was like, "Anybody scarred from this?" No. <laughs> yeah. Raise All right. Medical. Raise your hand if I need a medical bill to pay. Raise your hand. Nah, I'm just kidding. We don't have any medical. We don't have Medicaid. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Uh, you I'm poor bastard. Yeah, you you need to stay the rest of the night and close the kitchen. <laughs> like... I, I'm a I'm the real monster. I'm, <laughs> I hoard all your tips. Yeah, I have them all. <laughs> I have I have them all, and I only give the tips to the people that will actually give me suggestive photos. Why did why did we create like this monster of a manager in this, <laughs> in like, this like, like situation? No, no. And then he goes on and he's like, yeah, how do you think I was able to afford that 2005 Ford Escort out there? That's right. <laughs> Pristine car. That's hard work and determination right there, everyone. Right there. <laughs> I feel like we're making the script to like, like waiting number three. Like the third <laughs> Fucking this my yeah. whole Andy like, Milanakis is actually the kid that runs through the murderer <laughs> that runs the murderer. through. <laughs> He's the goddamn murderer. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Sorry. That went off the rails. No, really you're bad. good, man. <laughs> that was some, we did a good laugh after some deep shit, but ho. Oh, <laughs> I did it. Just, so bad. Okay. Out of all of that, out of all of that craziness, that's still not the craziest thing of this story. So, Unterberger was a deport- I'm about to get to it. Unterberger was deported on the 28th of May 1992 back to Austria. He wanted to get he wanted to get tried in LA because they could only prove him for one murder instead of all of them. But in Austria, they could get him for all of the prostitution murders. So, <laughs> in 1994 in Graz, I'm going to read the, this entire thing. In, 19, in June 1994, in Gra- uh, Graz, Austria, the trial began. Unterberger was an Austrian citizen, as an Austrian citizen, was to be tried of all murders in L.A., Prague, and Austria. The man himself played to the gallery and utilized his well-honed skills and manipulation by appealing to the jury and the public's sense of fair play when he admitted he was a rat and an <laughs> inver- inverterate liar who consumed women rather than loved them. How could they fail to demi- to dismiss such self-deprecating de- honesty? What the defense... <laughs> fuck, it, fuck this guy. God damn. Right, He's like, right. yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Come on, man. I just, I'm sorry. I can't help it. What the defense, though, didn't count on was the response to such questioning from the prosecution based on a psychiatric reports and the FBI investigative analysis that pointed out that a man such as Unterberger was not rational. As someone who suffered from uncontrollable compulsions and fetishes, it really didn't matter what status he held in life. He'd still kill, and it was an addic- it was an addiction. Because he was also trying to claim, like, he tried to do that, but then he also tried to claim that, like, 
I was trying to help them. Why would I be killing these women? I was trying to help the police. I'm a good man. I changed. Right, and right. everyone's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, yeah, everyone's like, you can go fuck yourself. Because further evidence, such as the crime lab reports on the li- uh, ligature knots, Blanca Bokova's hair strand recovered in the BMW and red fibers found on Bru- uh, Brunhilde Massar's body from Unterberger's scarf. So when they raided his uh, apartment, I forgot uh, that I talked about the red fibers. So when they raided his apartment uh, way back when and found the pictures of him with the LAPD, they found the red scarf and it matched these red fibers on Massar's body. So I had to go back about that. And it all finally com- uh, built up to a compelling case against the defendant. But he was still like, no, it can't be me. I changed. Two and a half months later, even the most supportive prep, there were people still fucking supporting this guy during this entire trial, saying he's innocent. Saying, no, he couldn't have done that. So even with all the support, this devious sociopath also began to, he started to lose support from the literary establishment and his girlfriend when she finally realized this guy was fucked up. And she's like, no, yeah, he's, there's something wrong with this guy. So after the trial ends, Jack Unterberger was finally found guilty of nine counts of murder. The Prague victim, all three L.A. victims, sorry, there's three, uh, and five in Austria. The court sentenced to life in prison. Wow. Now, the final twist of this entire thing, the craziest thing. So that night... Before the ink could dry on his sentencing papers, he fucking hangs himself in his cell. He hung himself with his pants tied in the exact same knot that he killed all the prostitutes with. Well, at least he's consistent. Yep. So, and you know what's super upsetting about it, though? It's because he never actually went to jail. It was the night of, and all the papers couldn't get processed. He is legally labeled innocent. What the fuck? Yep. (laughs) God, I don't know who to hate more in all of this. (laughs) Like, Like, the people that followed him and making the case for him are just as bad as the Ted Bunny fanatics. Yep. In, In my opinion. Yep. And then yeah. just like like fucking like he couldn't even oh my god, like right? He not left. that like not that I'm really <laughs> expecting any like, you know, noble behavior from anyone who's a fucking murderer, but like to not even just like fucking wait it out like Gacy. Like nope. like ah like oh my god, dude, that's just yep. Because he died before he could appeal the verdict under a technicality of Austrian law, Unterberger is officially to be considered as innocent, despite the guilty verdict. Unterberger's case was one of those considered in a review of this Austrian legal principle. Jeez. Oh my god, isn't that a crazy story? At least that pathetic, stupid dick is dead. Oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, man, like, it's insane to think, like, his fame, his fame got him out of prison. He just, he's like, I, no, see, I grew up terrible. That's, like, terrible that's what life. fucking Ted Bundy wanted. Yeah. Like, that's what he was always banking on, was, like, his fame and everybody that, you know, was at his back, at his back would just fucking make the case for him. I know. And, like, and the crazy thing, too, is, like, and in Austria, like, it, they really, truly believed in the whole, like, rehabilitation they wanted to believe he was rehabilitated because they believe in second chances and like the guys literally walked out and said that life is behind me i'm walking forward now like oh my god (laughs) so some fun just just a couple funnish facts besides that he killed himself he killed himself with the same knot so there is, uh, he had that one biography done, and then there was a. Actually, I was trying to actually get this movie for my movie review, but there was a indie film made by him called Jack, and it got, it makes, like it follows all about him and stuff like that. But then there was a small. Uh, it, I don't think it ever. I don't know if it's going to be happening anymore or if like it was just like up in talks at one moment. But Michael Fassbender was actually in talks of playing him in an American-made version. Holy shit. 
Yeah. Like, like a biopic or just yeah, like an inspired this guy. So oh, man. yeah, man, that's what I mean. Isn't that when can you see Quentin Tarantino making a movie like that, especially after Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah, like this dude play, see that. fucking like, like the whole Leonardo crime, DiCaprio it's... playing this guy. No, he's an older guy, so it'd be like uh, Christoph Waltz playing him because he's German and shit too. Oh my god, yeah, Christoph Waltz would be fucking perfect. He's perfect for this guy because this guy he had an ego. He was on talk shows. He was fucking walking around with the police, taking pictures with them, bonding with them, partying with them, and shit. I fucking, oh, gar- I fucking guarantee you that's why he cried. I bet I bet anything that's why he cried. I bet he fucking cried because he, like, not, obviously he knew he got fucking caught. Yeah. Like, but he fucking knew it was going to crash around him. Everything he built up was just going to fucking just fucking implode on his stupid yeah. face. And so he left a note, a suicide note, still proclaiming his fucking innocence. He said I was I was falsely accused and everything. He still didn't he never owned up to any of the new murders, only the original one. Like yeah. fuck this guy. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. That was Jack Unterberger. Damn. <laughs> it's fucking like crazy just crying in a goddamn kitchen. Just <laughs> I know. Do it. Like, I it. Went from just, like a terrible life. To fame and riches and popularity to just the most pathetic piece of shit in the world at the end. Like, oh my god, it was like when the second I read that he cried, I was like, Good. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. And he's a big enough bitch to not even face the sentence. Yep, that too. Exactly. You found a way out. <laughs> like, oh god, man. Damn. <laughs> Well, I like doing it this way. I like not knowing what I'm going to hear and then actually hearing it. Yeah? Did you like that? that yeah. Good. You're going to like like not knowing not knowing the facts. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fucking tight. Like, right on, man. <laughs> but just, God, wow. It's nuts. Yeah, I told you what. I told you, man, like when I was researching, I was, try, I was, I've been trying to find his poet, his poetry and stuff like that. All this, all this uh, online sites that used to have him nicked all of his poetry. Like you can't find, I couldn't find it. Like, I think you have to, I was trying to find his books and stuff, but then I was like, cause I wanted to read a poem on the air and be like, just to get inside his head a little bit. But I also didn't want to start getting into weird websites where <laughs> like, you do what you do want to get put on a list. I, yeah. Like I'm nervous already, but like, cause I found some like old papers about him and some old, like um, some old school articles, like our school papers, and like, uh, uh, oh my god, I can't think of the word. What, uh, magazine dissertations, oh, yeah, okay. dissertations and whatnot about this guy, just reading into it, and I could not find his poetry. So, <laughs> wow, yeah, so if it just out of curiosity, if anybody does have a book or poems you know message me <laughs> like i wouldn't i'd be curious but yeah if you if you have access to this dude's fucked up poems for being such a bitch <laughs> i want to see how he built himself up to be just this beautiful man i guess <laughs> like in a lot of people's eyes and like don't worry poets we all know that you're not like this dude yeah, so you're not you're not all crazy serial killers. Some of you are trying to be Edgar Allan Poe. We get it. That's cool. You're trying to be your own Edgar Allan poet. Oh, oh, see what it did there? Bang, boom. Oh, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I don't have the sound effect nearby. <laughs> it's all right. But yeah, just uh, and the site. Most uh, I got most of my um, most of my story and sources from Wikipedia and also Murderpedia is where I got a lot of this. They did. They have a really good story about him, and also the um, the YouTube. Oh my god, I have to. I have to look it up. I can't believe I forgot. I no, forgot. it's cool. I just want to look up the the, the, documentary. the documentary that I watched because it was really good, and it had stuff that even uh, Murderpedia didn't have on it, especially the interview with um, Marac, his uh, uh, his girlfriend at the time. And it was just seeing her talk about it was just so crazy. Oh, and one one last fun fact: uh, Jack, uh, Johann Jack Unterberger's serial killer documentary on YouTube. Um, it's from uh, Serial Killer Documentaries is the 
the YouTube page name. Okay. Yeah. And one last crazy thing about Jack. So when he was in LA, he uh, there's a small link of him to Richard Ramirez because he stayed at the Cecil. And so people think that's what started his killing spree in L.A. Is that he went to the Cecil and he wanted to he was trying to aspire to be uh, Richard Ramirez. But I only saw that in like one article and it looked like it was kind of just like a fluff piece of trying to make uh, the Cecil Hotel more crazier. Oh, OK. So but him staying there did happen. But him wanting to do the whole Richard Ramirez thing, I don't think so. And one sad fact about this guy. So as just for, uh, some of you know, there's the son of Sam law. And so the basic uh, thing about the son of Sam law, basic thing about it is that serial killers and murderers and anybody who commit like commits crime that harms someone else can't make money off of their victim off uh, from their crimes, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I will, we'll, I'll go more into the son of Sam law once we do the son of Sam. <laughs> um, but this guy found a way around it with his poetry and his his autobiography, because you know he did somewhat. He never directly talked about him murdering that girl, so he was able to make money off of it. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> like, I keep like I have found all those fun facts. I was like, fuck. I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> glad he's super fucking dead. So yeah, man. Yeah. All so right. that that's that's that was the monster. Yeah, that was a monster. That was the poet of de- death, Johann Jack Unterberger. Wow, damn, dude. Oh, that's some heavy shit. Yep. Um, well, listeners, with that, we are at <laughs> another end of another episode. Hey, reach out to us. Let us know if you yep. like us doing these uh, little serial killer uh, special episodes. Or, I mean. You, you, I mean, you're doing great already letting us know that you love it, and we appreciate that. But continue to let us know. Like, that lets us know yeah. how you're feeling about the content and if you're liking it. I um, mean, if we need to change it around, and a great way to do that is to go over to our iTunes and just leave us a review and let us know what you like about the show, what you hate about it. Hey, we might even just read it on the show for you. Yeah, you yeah. never know. Uh, let me also, find out. Please- and give us those five star ratings. So, like, for us to get like r- good sponsors and stuff and everything, because with our Patreon account, we don't want to take your guys' money. We want the money from sponsors. So, right. like, the five star ratings in the iTunes helps the algor- out that do- has a fu- some funky algorithm that'll help us get up in the charts. Like, we can have views and we can show them all these views and stuff. But for whatever reason, a lot of people, a lot of uh, sponsors like the iTunes stuff. So they need those. We need those five star ratings there. Oh, I can explain it. So, any, yeah. so the, basically, the way it works is that um, you know sponsors when they let you know podcasts, you know, sponsor their product, they'll do it for you know paid ad space. Um, but certain companies will, will only require analytics, and so part of those analytics are not just only you know how much we're being downloaded. But also how much we're being talked about, how much we're being received, um, you know, and, and that, so a great, you know, so just even a, leaving a review, like even a simple four star, you know, just saying, you know, this is what I love about the show. This is what they do for me. Um, you know, even though this is yeah, blah, 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 you know, not to say what you have to say is blah, blah, blah. But basically just kind of leaving those reviews helps us out a lot immensely because then we can go to these uh companies and keep in mind like we're being the park record podcast we're not going to just any you know company to promote any product we're only going to ones that uh that we, we that, like that, that we, we think like you guys will like and and you know some will be a hit and miss but mm. we're you know it, there, there's two ways to to fund the show and the and it's either with the amazing and graceful um you know it, it just like donations that you guys send to us yeah yeah, um, we're or, super grateful. We keep, we're always grateful and can't thank you guys enough. Exactly. No, definitely. Um, or or sponsors. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we're we're not Joe Rogan. We're not going to be you <laughs> yeah. know, making that. We're not going to be in the millions, Mark. But um, you know, you you just kind of being either a patron or just leaving these reviews is helping us out a lot. It's helping us make a name for us. And also it really kind of helps us out too, by bringing, giving us the opportunity to bring on bigger, better guests. Um, yeah, I know recently better we, content for you guys, cause we're doing this all for you guys and we love you guys and love all of you so much. And we want to give you better and qual- better quality content and better content. 
exactly. So, I mean, without having to go over it all over again, same circle, yep. time over and time over again, go over to our iTunes, go to our YouTube, leave some comments. You know, if you're liking an episode, let us know. And just, you know, it's it's just what we said. So, sorry, I'm trying to cut myself off before I start saying the same thing over again. <laughs> um, so, so, but with that being said, if you want to keep up with everything we're doing and, and you know, just keep being part of everything uh please go and like us on facebook you can search us up punk record podcast or on our twitter at official prhp or on our instagram at punk rock horror podcast hashtag prhp podcast you can also follow me on instagram at the undead matt um we are so we are working on some band showcase episodes right now um we're, we're still trying to get bands to to come on the show to get, to get some interviews done um but because of the whole stay at home um kind of quarantine it's affected a lot of people in a lot of ways so just has to be a little more patient with that as we figure that out and, and we try to get some content out we are in talks with some bands right now uh, another big shout out to snubbedrecords.com again go to the link below check out snubbedrecords.com sign yourself up for see if you're eligible for a free a bag of coffee and while you're at it check out some of the amazing music that is signed under and produced by the amazing snubbed records um with that being said ghouls gals creeps and mutants you know where to go if you want to support us patreon.com slash punk recorder podcast as well um thank you again for letting us hang out with you and talk to you about horror yep thank you guys and thanks for listening to my tale okay bye, bye.